Can you go away Why? for a minute? No. We have to be quiet, okay? Why? I have to be like silly. No, you gotta be quiet. This may take a while. Hey guys, I'm Noelle Jones. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing our adoption story with you guys. Hopefully, y'all can do something. Follow along. Follow along. Even though there's going to probably be a lot of distractions. <laughs> so the reason I want to share our adoption story with everybody on YouTube is I want people that are thinking about adoption or fostering or if you're having trouble with in vitro and you're scared that your only choice is to not have a baby or adopt, I want you to hear our story and realize that it may seem scary, but it is so fulfilling and it's such a blessing. And, you know, I knew people that had their own kids and I knew people that had adopted kids, but I didn't really know many people, I think anybody that had both. And so I was so worried that I would love them differently or I would, you know, favor my birth, my biological child over a child that wasn't that I didn't have, that I didn't give birth to, and that did scare me because I wanted to make sure that I gave that child the life they deserved and loved it like it deserved to be loved. If you get anything from our adoption story, I really hope that it may help you feel more open to adoption and not so scared to adopt and help you feel like not so defeated that you may not be able to have a child biologically. Um, so keep watching and I hope that you will find our story helpful and if you're not planning to adopt or thinking to adopt I hope that you will maybe get to know our family a little better. Our adoption story, here we go. She's gonna be so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Show them the book. Turn it around. Turn around. This is the sweetest book, and it's about the fox, and they they find their baby comes to them, doesn't she? It's very good for kids and kind of starting to pave the way, kind of starting to pave the way for that conversation. We don't ever want them to be like 10 or 8 or whatever and to just wake up one day and go, oh, by the way, you're adopted. We want them to know from the beginning that they did not grow in mommy's tummy, they grew in somebody else's tummy for mommy and daddy because mommy and daddy couldn't. I don't know if y'all have navigated that yourselves. I would love for you to leave in the comment how you did, how you had that conversation, at what age you had that conversation. I think it's gonna be different for every family. It's gonna be a different conversation just depending on your situation. And so any help will be appreciated because <laughs> we don't even know how to start. So are other people watching this video would greatly appreciate it or even if people are even you know thinking about adopting it will um your ideas may help them navigate through that um and kind of help make their decision for them so you know we're all here to help each other let's get on with our adoption story taking it back we have a 14 year old who is mine biologically i was married to her dad for like seven years um I think, I don't know, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. I can't remember how long we're married. I'm gonna yes. say seven years. So. Ish. So me and Faith's dad were married. She was your typical only child. Do whatever we wanted, whenever she wanted, because she was the only one. Took her everywhere with us. We just had the one, so it was easier to manage. She was with adults a lot. Uh, we helped a lot with our church youth group, and she really wasn't around kids very much. When Faith was around two and a half, three years old, we did get a divorce. Just stick with me. I promise this has a lot to do with our adoption story. Just hear me out. Through our divorce, we both separately went, I think, above and beyond for her trying to cushion that divorce as much as we can. And I think as adults, we forget how we forget how resilient kids are. As with our adult brain, you know, we tried to overcompensate for her having to go through a divorce. Our divorce was not nasty. Our divorce was not ugly in any way, shape, or form. 
we did, you know, we tried to do what was best for her, being a child, you know, innocent and everything. So, we tried to cushion it as much as we could for her, to make it as easy for her. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of came back and bit us both in the butt because because she learned through all of that. Um, she got whatever she wanted, whenever she wanted. We were always going and doing stuff. We st kept her busy 24-7 uh, when we when each one had her. And tried to make up for that other parent not being there. As you can imagine, growing up, as an only child at both houses, she got, she was able to kind of do whatever she wanted in the, and when I say that, I mean not that we just allowed her to act however she wanted, but, but we only had her. So it was, on a weekend, it was more of, Faith, what do you want to do? And we could do it because she was the only one. You amplify that into a teenager or into a preteen, and you can imagine what that evolved into she was your and again we didn't mean for that to happen but let me tell you faith was your typical only child you know just joking i would say you need a sibling to get you in check never ever thinking that was even in the cards through faith's elementary school years me and my now husband um we had separately never really wanted any more kids. I don't know that we'd even ever talked about it. It just, I knew I didn't want any more. Uh, he had two older kids. He had two older kids, middle school age, I guess, when we met. Um, and I, we just never talked about it because we were both at points in our life where I think we just assumed the other one didn't want any more. So I really started I guess in my heart and in my brain just kind of want more. Just, I mean, you see how fast kids grow and you know faith was at the point where she was kind of getting up into elementary school and I knew that that chapter was going to be closed and there would be no more elementary school and I just started really wanting more and Jeremy was okay with that he had had a vasectomy 13 years prior um, so we didn't even know if it was a possibility and you know adoption never crossed our minds ever adoption never crossed our minds talked about it we went through the in, the in vitro doctors the blood work um, all of those things and thought insurance may pay for some of it they called us one day I mean literally all that was left was just say yes we're gonna do it um, and but there was a high possibility because it had been so long it wouldn't work and you know we kind of got to the point where we got a call insurance was not going to help pay for any of it and that was kind of like our saving grace that that's that was the only way we would be able to, to afford it. It is so expensive y'all if you have been through in vitro and the shots and the the fertility stuff you know it gets so expensive and there's there's not even a guarantee that it's gonna happen and so we just had to sit down and think are we okay with paying a monthly chunk of money every month to pay it off on a payment plan if we're not even gonna have a baby to show for it and if I have to pay that every month it's just a reminder to me that I don't have a baby we decided that was not the decision the route that we wanted to go and as much as it broke my heart um, again I had never wanted any more kids and so I always said you know the one that you stop with when when parents have three four five kids and they go if I'd have had that one first, I'd have stopped. I got that one first. I had the most awful pregnancy, sick every day, could lick a popsicle and throw it up, I'm telling you. Could eat one bite of a saltine cracker and throw it up. I was so sick. I had blood work come back weird and was worried there was like something wrong with the baby. Went and found out she was fine. I had to go to a, spe a preg specialist um, at the preg center Everything was fine. We were able to find out she was a girl earlier than normal just because we had to have some extensive ultrasounds done. So that was fun. Uh, but other than that, 
Like, it was awful. I had preterm labor. So, anyway, I knew I never wanted to have to do that again. But, adoption never crossed my mind. And so, I kept thinking, I kept thinking, why am I so upset that I can't, that I'm not going to have any more kids? And again, in my brain, I'm so confused because I'm trying to figure out, like, I didn't want any more kids. Why am I so upset? I didn't even want more kids. Why is this crushing my heart so bad? So I had a journal and I thought, well, maybe if I get everything out of my brain and out of my heart and out of my heart on paper, maybe it'll make me feel better. Now, this, I found it and this date is... 1 16 if you can see that um you know i just have wrote a lot of stuff down wrote a lot of stuff down and then down here it says lord if it is not your will for me to have a baby take that want out of my heart and give me peace about that decision because again i didn't want any more kids i had to change my heart into having peace with something that may not have been my way and I think that's when your mindset changes is when you like just give up give it up and say you know at this point I understand what I want may not be your will for what I want to be pushed away and and what is meant to happen happen and me to just be okay with that and be at peace with that. Like, I started just living my life, being grateful for what I had, and making the best of what I had, and just being okay with that's our family, and that's how it's going to be. My husband and I would always joke with people, though, like, over the years, he had a niece that had twins, and we would tell her, like, you're just selfish. Just... Just, you get two. Like, you have two. Don't be selfish. Give us one of them. Like, we'll take your kid. We would joke with parents at church and say, you know, can we keep him? Or can we, ha you're pregnant, can we have it? <laughs> we just joke about it. Joking. Promise. It was a joke. We're not going to steal anybody's baby. But, that's why this next part kind of, I didn't believe it. So, I came home one night. I think it was in February of 2019. I came in, my husband was on the phone, we got a phone call from my husband's sister in Texas that his niece was pregnant and I said, well, what's she going to do? And he said, I don't think she's going to carry it full term, like I don't think she can keep it. He said, I told her, we'd take it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Didn't think another thing about it. About a month later kind of started really talking about it and really talking about it and I thought this is crazy I have, an, I have a 10 year old and I can barely get her situated and where she needs to go me and my husband both work full-time jobs and then some and Faith was in gymnastics and chorus and um, she was in a play at school like there was just she I thought, there's no way. There's no time. There's n We can't. Well, then the more we talked to the niece, and I figured out this wasn't just a joke that my husband was playing on me. Like I said, thinking back, I didn't know we were serious because we joked about that all the time with people. But he didn't want me to get my hopes up and then be let down. You know what I mean? So it was kind of a joke till it got serious. Then the more we talked about it together... Still hadn't told Faith because I didn't want to ruffle her feathers if I didn't have to. And, you know, she has always been headstrong with, I do not want any siblings. I do not need any siblings. I've got my cousins. I've got friends. Like, I need no siblings. Again, typical only child syndrome. We still didn't put a crib in because... You know, if you've adopted or thought about adopting, you know anything can change at any minute. You can literally get to the hospital, baby born in your arms, and the birth mom changed their mind. So, I really kind of kept a wall up up until our adoption was final. I'm sure it got the more real it came, but like I said, keeping a wall up because it can change at any minute. We did not even put a crib up until May. I didn't want to be reminded every day walking by a nursery and seeing a crib just to be reminded there's no baby. During the meantime, kind of in the background,
through all this adoption stuff, I did get the news that my grandmother, who practically raised me, we grew up next door to her, and her and my papa were angels on earth to me, and we found out that she was going to have to be put on hospice for some kidney failure and fluid around her heart and just, um, just some health issues that she was starting to go down pretty quickly. Uh, three months prior to hearing about this possible adoption, I remember sitting in front of the Christmas tree crying my heart out to my husband because I always wanted to see my grandmother, my nanny, hold another one of my babies. And I just wanted to see that. And, you know, it had never crossed my mind really until I did decide I may want another one. And then it was such a big deal for me to know my amazing grandparents. And then after that news, I thought, well, I'm never going to see that. And one night it just hit me and it broke my heart. And um, again, that was in December. And then February, we found out about possibly an option to adopt. Seeing now how everything seems like such a helpless feeling, you know, looking back now, it all just was paving the way for the next thing. May we put the crib up. She was due, I, I want to say June. So we planned Faith's birthday party. Her birthday's June 6th. So we planned to have her party at our house, make it huge to kind of cushion again. I know, overdoing it, but trying to cushion the way for this baby because we just did not want her to feel left out. I knew this was such a cru critical time in her life, um, about to be a teenager. And, you know, you changed so much and I knew that was just a tough time in life anyway. And then to add this and her to feel left out or less than enough and that she wasn't enough so we needed another baby and you know all these are going through my mom guilt brain and so we planned this huge birthday party at our house and we planned it two weeks before her birthday so that we could make sure that we had this party for her and she had her own day before the baby came and wouldn't you guess it the baby came early. <laughs> so we had to miss her birthday party at our house and that just made flying out more stressful for me and I cried and I cried and I felt so guilty. Luckily her dad and her stepmom and my mother stepped up to the plate. They came to our house, made her birthday party amazing and it went off without a hitch and she enjoyed her day. She's not let me live that down to this day. So we got the call one Saturday morning around five o'clock our time, seven something Texas time. And she thought she may be in labor, but this had happened to her before with the other two kids and she went another two weeks. So they said, you change your plane tickets yet, wait and see what happens. Well, a little bit later, we got a call. She was dilated to a nine. So of course, my anxiety and my brain's going great. We couldn't get our plane tickets changed till we weren't going to be able to get to the baby for 12 hours. That was the quickest flight we could find. So in my brain, I was like, great, she's going to change her mind. We're going to get all the way there. She's going to change her mind. She's going to have all day to bond with this baby. And great, the ball's going to drop. I knew this was going to happen. So that was, so we didn't have luggage. I had to run out to Coles, get luggage, pack our bags. Um, Faith was at her dad's house at the time, so she, they were gracious enough to bring her to me so I could say bye, and I cried the whole way to the airport, again feeling so guilty that I was doing this to her, and, but yet wanting it so bad at the same time, and I think that's just mom guilt. You just, either way you go, you feel guilty, you know what I mean? We fly to her, we had, because of it being across state lines. We had to have an attorney in South Carolina and an attorney in Texas. Well, she went into labor into a hospital in a different county. So it was Memorial Day weekend and our attorney here had to try to find an attorney in another county to do all the paperwork and come to the hospital on Memorial Day weekend. So that was just another little hiccup and a twist and a turn. Just one thing after another because that's just my life. And 
But we get there, we meet her, and she's the most precious thing. And my husband would not put her down. And every picture that anybody saw on Facebook. Okay, so again, we had not really told many people here. Our closest friends and family knew. But when I posted it on my Facebook, people were like mind blown. They had no idea. Um, because, you know, the more people you tell, the more questions you get. And it just reminds you that it didn't happen or that something went wrong. And you just don't want to do that. We did have to stay in Texas for two weeks because of it being over state lines. I had never been away from Faith that long. And so I felt really guilty. I missed her birthday. So we flew back to South Carolina with this newborn. I had never flown with a newborn, so I had no idea what to expect with that. Get on this plane with a newborn, having no idea what to expect with a newborn on an airplane for that long. And the flight attendants were amazing. The people that were asking about the baby, you know, we were able to share our story with everybody that asked. And the support we got even on the plane <laughs> coming back was amazing and the flight attendants and the pilot they were all so excited for us like, and I could not wait to see Faith. We had some friends give us a baby shower uh, because we did not have anything. We had a couple bottles, a crib, and a couple outfits and <laughs> that was it. So. After our baby shower, so many people came out to support us and we did not need anything after that shower. So when Faith did meet her, she loved her to death and of course the second she held that baby, everything went out the window and I mean she still has her days. She is 14 now and she has her moments but she's great with them. She's the best big sister and we were just going to live happily ever after as a family of four. But wait, there's more. My grandmother did pass away, so we got Ellie in May 25th. My grandmother passed away a couple months later in July, but she did get to hold her and love on her. And, you know, my my papa called Ellie his angel because he said God took an angel and God gave him an angel. And she ate breakfast with him every morning pretty much until he passed away just about a year ago. And he has been, he, she was just his little sunshine every day. Kept his mind busy and um, just made his day better every day without my nanny. They were married for 77 years so you can imagine how rough that was for him. They just don't make love like that anymore. Uh, they, Everybody that met them saw their love for each other and just were amazed that after 77 years, they still had that kind of love for each other. And so she helped him through that for two years and we found out that she, his niece was pregnant again. It never crossed our mind that we were gonna take the baby. Again, we had our hands full and didn't even cross our mind. Bible study I was in at the time at my church, uh, we had been praying for the birth mom and we had been praying for this baby and God's will for this baby. And if it was meant for the mom to keep her, that he would work that out. And otherwise, if it was meant for another family to have this precious baby, then just get the baby where it needs to go. In the middle of all that, my mother-in-law passed away with COVID. He was very close to his mom. It was really hard for him and just some stuff with work. He'd been having some, some hard things with um, his job and I just knew that if something happened to her, I didn't know what I was gonna do with him. It just blows my mind still and gives me chills how the timeline of everything just evolved. So my husband went ahead and filled out the application for Operation Heal Our Patriots and I will link it below. You have got to read about it. They do amazing things for so many amazing people. He said, you know, I'll fill it out, but I don't even have the luck of finding a penny on heads walking down the street. So don't get your hopes up. So insane how we just got, his mom passed away on Wednesday and the next Thursday we got the call that we had been picked. It was probably one of the most amazing things I'll ever do in my life. And I know that sounds weird, but just the love that they gave us and the prayers that we received there and the support that we got there, the marriage support, the emotional support. After a week with their staff there, we felt like we had known them forever 
and like they were just our family and they still contact us and check on us and we made some amazing friends there and still talk to them and support each other and you know it's one thing to have friends in your same situation when you meet people that have been through some of the same things you have it's easier to connect because they really truly understand what you're going through as a spouse and as you know the one that has went through certain situations and um we, we just made some amazing connections there we flew out to phoenix and then had a connecting flight from phoenix to anchorage we knew that the birth mom had given birth again i mean we really didn't think we were going to be getting the baby um but we when we landed in phoenix we had a 30 minute window before our next flight and when we landed you know your plane uh, when you land on the plane and then you get service we had a voicemail so birth mom could not keep her at this point and i think she was going to try initially and it just didn't work out and so i think at this point the baby was two or three weeks old and in like a temporary placement situation and again we had not talked to anyone here other than my husband's sister um and was just trying to think about what to do and so we got this call in phoenix <laughs> this once in a lifetime opportunity to go to alaska all expense paid to get all the support we needed at the time and I wasn't turning around I was going on that trip because my husband needed it and I needed it and you know again I didn't know if it was in the cards for us to get this baby we get we get this call we got to make this decision and if it's even feasible for us and get on the plane to fly to Alaska we're not even sitting together. We're sitting way apart to go to Alaska after getting this huge phone call, this like life-changing decision we have to make and we're not even sitting with each other. Looking back, I think that was good. I think we could both think about it separately. At the time, I was like, what are, what are we gonna do? But then I thought, you know what? That was another one of those things that just worked out. I think it was better. We thought about it separately before we talked about it together because um, we could kind of think what we wanted to do before we brought it to the other one and we get to Alaska and of course you're there to open up and to talk we met some amazing people that were able to kind of help through this decision I just was so confused because like how do you even make that decision I had a 12 or 13 year old and then we had a two-year-old and now we're gonna bring in a newborn are you serious I just didn't think that was feasible. I had so much turmoil in my heart and in my mind, but we met the most amazing couple in Alaska. We met Jim Wallace and Susie Wallace. and They were angels sent straight to us. Now I'm telling you, you can believe what you want to, but they were placed on our path for this purpose. And looking back, I know this. They had their own kids and then they fostered to adopt some kids. I would cry to that poor couple every morning at breakfast and because I just I didn't know what to do I didn't even know how to make such a life-changing decision about something I had not even ever thought about Jim Wallace looked me straight in the face and he said these words and if you are struggling with anything if you're watching this and struggling with anything right now listen to these words he looked at me and he said you just have to think are you doing the easy thing or are you doing the right thing okay i was like fine i'll take the baby <laughs> saying that to me changed my entire life and changed my outlook on any decisions that i make you know no it may not be easy but it was also my child's sibling and how do I say no to that and if all this stuff is being sat in my lap I can't ignore it another thing that happened on our way to Alaska when we flew into from Phoenix you know we got the phone call the only two people that knew about this my husband's sister who's the grandma of the kids and then um, 
the obviously birth mom and then my mother it, we hadn't talked to anybody else because you know the time difference is so crazy and it just happened so fast we landed in Anchorage it was like 2 in the morning when I woke up the next morning we went down to have breakfast like the continental breakfast before we went to get on before we got on the plane to go to our destination I had so I left my phone in the room while we went down to eat my husband of course talking like he always does to people I said okay I'm gonna go take a shower you stay here I'm gonna go take a shower and uh, get ready I went back to the room I looked at my phone again nobody knew about the phone call we just had at the airport nobody knew about it I looked at my phone and the lady that's in my Bible study had texted me. Now again, she knew nothing about this phone call that we had gotten just hours before. I looked at my, my phone and it said, I know in Bible study we've been praying for God's will for this baby, but if God's will is for you and your husband to take this baby, I want to give you the money for your adoption. Okay, that was one of our excuses that we had made to each other. like. We don't even have Ellie paid off yet. And now we're going to add another expensive, you know, the lawyer fees and the home study fees and all that adds up. Like, we haven't even paid her off yet. There's, there's just no way, you know. And it's like every excuse we made, it sort of was just kind of sat in our lap like, here you go. And all this just added up. And so the second that Jim Wallace told me those words, all of this just added up in my mind and it was just like here's your answer this is this is what you have to do keep in mind faith is not with us at this time like we have to fly back and we have to fly back pick her up in charlotte and then head home and tell her guess what tomorrow we're getting another baby like she just wrapped her mind around ellie and you can imagine how that went but we did fly home. We picked her up in Charlotte. We told her the news. She was not happy, but I just had to explain to her. Sometimes God calls you to do things that you don't even necessarily have plans to do. Ellie, that you yourself don't even have plans to do. I can't live here anymore. Stop. And this is impossible. Sometimes, like, how do you explain that to a child when you, as an adult, don't even understand that, can't comprehend it? I'm not serious often, and I'm really trying hard, and she is not helping. So, like, it's so hard to ex <laughs> It's so hard to explain to a child, because even as an adult, sometimes you don't understand how God works. And so she really struggled with that, but, you know... This, so we got home and we <laughs> didn't have a crib we didn't have a bassinet like we didn't have anything and we had some friends of ours again give us a baby shower and we were able to get everything we needed I felt so awful because I told my husband like it <laughs> it is cliche I'm really trying to be patient right now. If this camera wasn't on, I probably would have already wrung her neck. Came home, we got Emmy the next day, and she is the most precious thing. So Ellie and my so my Ellie and my Faith are um, live wires and very just hyper and into everything and laugh and loves to make people laugh. And Emmy, I say she's my breath of fresh air because she is so sweet and so chill. And she just loves to hug and kiss and cuddle and she is precious. And I don't know what we'd do without her. Um, you know, I look at my friends and their kids are Faith's age and older and they are just living their best life because their kids can stay home by themselves. And like we were almost, we were almost there. And, um... But that's not, that's just not where we're at in our life. So y'all, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> so y'all, I hope you enjoyed our adoption story. If you have adopted kids or have adopted kids or if you are thinking about adopting, I hope that you will. <laughs> this is why 
I could not fathom having another kid. If you have adopted or know someone that has adopted, I would love in the comments if you would share with me because I would love to know um, how you started that conversation, how you navigated through that, what age, and just how you, that kind of evolved. Um, and, I think, this way. and I think other people that are going through the same thing or even thinking about adopting may have some of the same questions and we can maybe help out each other. If you're still watching this, <laughs> thank you. But if you get anything out of today's video, I want you to understand that I know it sounds like people say, I know people say this all the time, but I am here to tell you I've been there and I know everything you're, go you're going through right now feels so hopeless and so like it kind of takes your purpose away. You can't have your own kids or or thinking about adopting. I, you know, I know how you feel, but I promise you, I'm here to tell you that everything, that everything you're going through right now has a purpose. I promise you. And in two years or a year or six months, you're going to look back and you're going to see the puzzle pieces come together and everything's going to make sense. I promise you. You're living day to day and you're going through things and discouraging outcomes I promise I know it's hard I know it is but I promise you all the puzzle pieces are going to come together and it's going to make sense and it's going to be more beautiful than you could have ever imagined so that's it for today's video I hope that you I enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up I want to I want to talk first and if you haven't yet subscribe to our channel and you will be notified when we post more videos so we'll see you so we'll see you in the next video. Bye!